Good day, everyone. I'm your host, Lee Judge, and welcome to today's webinar entitled The Art of Contact Center Efficiency, How to Instantly Deliver a Simple and Effortless Agent and Customer User Experience, brought to you by WalkMe and Jakarta. As a note, once again, to respect the privacy of our attendees, only your name will appear in the attendee window. Our presenters today are Jason Silberman, Senior Marketing and Resource Director at WalkMe and editor of Training Station Blog, Johnny Steiner, Marketing Director of WalkMe, and Odid Kaplan, Manager of Pre-Sales at Jakarta. Today, WalkMe and Jakarta team up to demonstrate how technologies like Jakarta's Visual IVR and WalkMe's guidance can generate instant benefits such as sim simplifying the website experience for your customers and how to visually en enable IVR uh, your IVR to provide innovative experiences to your customers while also improving call center productivity and many others. As a note, following the presentation, there will be a question and answer session, so please feel free to type your questions in the Q&A window at any time. Uh, again, as a note, only your name will appear in the attendees window. So let's begin. The presentation is all yours, Jason. Thank you very much, Lee. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, as Lee mentioned, my name is Jason Silberman. I'd like to thank you all for attending our webinar today, uh, in which we'll take a look at some of the challenges related to contact center efficiency and provide a satisfying, uh, and providing a satisfying customer experience. And we will examine two solutions that can help overcome these challenges by bringing a better, easier, and more efficient customer experience and raising customer satisfaction. Now, before I get started talking about our presenters uh, and the agenda for today's webinar, I just want to mention, uh, as Lee did, that there will be time for answering a few questions toward the end of the webinar. So uh, we do encourage you to ask. Um, as Lee mentioned, my name is Jason Silverman. I'll be joined today by Johnny Steiner, Marketing Director of WalkMe, and Oded Kaplan, Pre-Sales Manager at Jakarta. So let's quickly look at the agenda for today's webinar. We will look at the relationship between a bad online user experience, whether it's a confusing website, it's not very usable, and contact center inefficiency. Uh, we'll also then look at self-service via real-time guidance delivered to customers or contact center agents at the exact moment of need and how that can make any process online easier to complete without the need to contact support or ask for assistance. Uh, at that point, later on, we'll also be uh, be turning to looking at a different type of self-service, how visual self-service drives great customer experience, enabling seamless continuity from the visual IVR transaction to the contact center. So uh, yeah, uh, let's start with, um, with the pain. Um, what I mean by that is let's, what are the common pain points to contact center efficiency that managers face? Of course, it starts with the high volume of incoming support requests which bombard the agents really nonstop. Together with the quantity of support requests is that many requests take a long time to resolve. Remember the, uh, that we're talking about here, the entire customer journey, that the clock begins as soon as the customer decides to contact you, not once he or she is speaking with someone. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, there also, there's uh, you know, always a need that they are asked a lot of, um, the same information twice. Think about often when they're um, asked to give their account, uh, account number uh, multiple times, so it causes some frustration as well during the slow resolution process. There is, of course, high customer care costs. A contact center is often seen as an example of a cost center, which, while perhaps a bit unfair, uh, the cost factor is very much real. Uh, furthermore, due to all these things, the confusion that requires a customer to contact the, the contact support in the first place, the slow resolution times, et cetera, all these can lead to a lot of frustration from both the customers and the contact center agents as well. So um, finally, just to mention one final point, anyone who has worked in or managed a contact center can attest that there is a very high agent turnover rate there, so there is a constant need to train new agents. When you combine that with what is already a high-pressure, high-stress environment that you can imagine a contact center to be, Having freshly trained, age, freshly trained agents come into that environment um, and really kind of be thrown to the wolves can be a, a very much of an overwhelming experience. So all these lead to a key question. How can we make it work? How can we use visual self-service or on-screen guidance or perhaps another way to make contact centers more efficient? So with that in mind, I'd like to introduce the first of our two presenters today, uh, Johnny Steiner of WalkMe, to answer some of these questions. 
Johnny, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Jason, for the uh, great introduction. And uh, thanks, everybody, for being with us here today. As Jason mentioned earlier, I'm here to share a bit about some of the challenges face facing contact center managers in terms of the online customer experience and its impact on contact center efficiency. I will also be showing you how an online guidance platform can meet these challenges internally by improving efficiency and performance of the contact center agent and externally in strengthening customer confidence by increasing the usability of customer-facing websites. So the, continu the continuing mission of a contact center is to support customer needs and reinforce your business goals and values. There is an order to accomplishments that a company needs to achieve when it comes to uh, customer support and engagement. It all starts with having a website that's easy to use. From there, the aim is to have a high rate of customer adoption in as short a time as possible. Next, it's important to create a method by which new software updates and changes do not derail customer productivity. Once those items are in place, you can help customers focus on what they need to do and not how to do it. Seems simple, no? What then are some of the pain points that prevent this from happening? I'm going to divide the pain points in two. First, we're going to look at the customer side, and then from there, we can take a closer look at what directly affects uh, the contact center internally. So what we're looking at right now are a few uh, statistics that we have uh, come across over throughout our research, and uh, they go as follows. 71% of customers expect assistance within five minutes. 56% want their issue resolved in one interaction. 60% want an email address or phone number. Uh, this goes along with the uh, omni-channel support, which is something we're going to get into a little bit later. 57% uh, want a web chat option, and it's important to note that the per call cost on average is $27 to $55, and for a web chat, it's only $2 to $5. Now, a way to solve many of these issues is by improving your customer service experience. In a sense, the slide we're looking at right now is going to read almost like the old nursery rhyme, the old woman who swallowed the fly. She keeps getting, eating larger and larger animals in an effort to solve her first problem, which was ingesting an insect in the first place. So let me explain. A poor online customer experience is going to lead to a high volume of incoming support requests. That makes uh, perfect sense right there. And from that, it's going to lead to slow resolution. The high volume is going to make it impossible for agents to solve everything in a timely fashion. From that, the cost per call is going to go up because as the resolutions are becoming more slow, the volume of incoming support requests are going up as well. And in addition to that, we're not only speaking about the cost per call, we're also talking about the cost in terms of loss of revenue due to customers leaving as a result of a poor customer experience. From that, we have to deal with the frustration due to the cost and the slow resolution due to the poor UX, the whole, the whole story. And from there, we need an easy and effective, uh, effective omni-channel support. That is the ability for companies to serve their customers via email, chat, even social media, not only by phone. Ideally, they should not even be contacting us with these questions at all. Well, that's the clincher, of course. This is in reference to simple how-to questions. For example, if you need help changing your address in your bank account, or perhaps you need help reviewing your phone bill. Without a self-service option, what can you do? With online self-service, you will have a hub available where simple how-to questions will be answered, and that will give you the opportunity to solve a lot of problems before they ever need to call. So how, then, can we provide this through a set of services while lowering costs and keeping the pressure off our contact center agents? The answer is in online guidance. So what we're talking about right now is a redu reduction in effort, right? Online guided navigation like a GPS, provides online customers with step-by-step -step walkthroughs for completing tax, tasks and gathering information. When using the platform, you have all the directions to complete any task or action at your disposal, just like a GPS in your car. So I'm going to show you two examples of this type of guidance. One is on an internal system by a company called Clarison, and the other is going to be the uh, customer-facing web website of walkme.com. So I'm going to go over here right now to clarison.com. I'm sure that uh, not everyone is familiar with it. That's okay. It's a product management software. And for the first time user, it can be somewhat of a confusing place. Somebody who doesn't really know how to navigate would have to search around or maybe look through the database of information. Or 
they could use this button right here. This was designed with WalkMe and uh, the good people at Clarison, the Show Me button. And what this provides is a list of walkthroughs to help orient people to the site and to help them use some of the elements a little bit better. For example, we have this Welcome to Clarison. And now this is going to take us on a little bit of a tour of the website, show us some of the basic elements. But in addition to that, it can be set up with what we call a contextual rule. And what that would do is the first time a new user would log into the website, this would play automatically in order to help orient them as soon as they logged in. So we're going to go through it a little bit here. As you can see, this, uh, this bubble here has a video embedded in it with links to technical support and the educational database. From there, we're going to take a look at the navigation panel and walk through some of the elements here and take a look at what they can do and how they can help us do our job more efficiently. In addition to that, something that we come across often that's difficult is that of change management. When a new element is introduced, a new process, whatever it may be, we would set up again a contextual rule that would play the update balloon as soon as a user would log in for the first time after the update has been implemented. It even has a link here to blog posts so that people can check in and read a little bit more about what's going on. Now I'd like to take you very quickly to walkme.com. And he, we have here the walkme highlights. And we can click on the walkme overview. Now this would help people get to use a website before they've even sort of familiarized themselves with what they're doing. We're walking through the process of seeing how we can use some of the features, what the site can do, and walk through the process of taking a quick tour as soon as people log in. So with this self-service uh, platform at your disposal, your customers are going to have the ability to train themselves and solve many tasks without actually contacting your support department. With those tools at their disposal, you're going to be able to save a ton of time and money. And by making your website more usable, a major reduction in attrition and churn is all but guaranteed. So this is going to make your customers' lives easier, but online guidance can also help your agents. And let's see how we can do that. There's a tremendous amount of pressure in contact centers uh, due to demands of upper management, demands of customers. Let's take a closer look at some of these pressures and how online guidance uh, can help defeat them. So the first would be the pressure to maintain appropriate staffing levels in contact centers often causes new recruits to be transitioned from initial training to full deployment before they're fully acclimatized. Online guidance here helps in shifting a lot of the learning of CRM software, for example, away from the training period to the actual working period. Uh, second, agent, agent churn for first-time agents is often at its highest during the first 90 days of employment, and it usually results from being overwhelmed by the demands of the role after being thrown in the deep end. So online guidance, again, can help here by alleviating confusion and the feeling of being overwhelmed, at least from the perspective of learning unfamiliar software. And uh, finally, due to the increased diversity of systems, processes, and channels now supported, the evolution from contact center to engagement center adds to the need for onboarding best practices. Uh, something that we've discovered in our, in our many conversations with the people at Gartner is that enabling process guidance to accelerate learning and reduce process complexity. Now, before we get into our next demo, I just want to quickly share with you something that we call uh, the learning curve. And what this discusses right here is basically the way um, an agent would be trained and learn as they're being trained. And of course, once they've uh, been acclimated to their role, they're going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to have a small time where they would forget some things. But of course, that can be solved with a period of retraining. But as soon as change management has been in some way uh, implemented or some kind of a process change has been put into whatever systems they're using, we have seen that it basically resets uh, the learning curve to step one. So what we're going to do is show how first-time visitors can be trained within minutes to competency. Um, on the agent side, it's also a simple process to onboard agents at their work. So let's take a look right now. I'm going to click over here to show how an integrated self-service platform can help with some of these issues. What we're looking at right now is going to be uh, salesforce.com. Just a second here. 
Okay. What we're looking at here is Salesforce.com, and I'm sure that uh, many of you are familiar with Salesforce. And for those of you who are not, it's going to be almost uh, even better to take a look at what we're what we're about to show you. Um, it can be a confusing place. There's so many places to click. There's so many different elements. But we have several ways to make that a lot easier. For example, we have here the Need Help button. Now, this is not part of the native Salesforce design. What this is is part of the WalkMe platform. It is overlaid with a simple uh, JavaScript that can be implemented in just a few minutes. And watch what happens when I click. It has opened up a list of walkthroughs. And uh, I'd like to show you one right now. And that's going to be the how to create a new price book method, the spotlight method. Because for example, if you were to ask a new user the first time they were about to use the website to create a, a new price book, they would have to search on the internet for it. They could watch a video on YouTube. Maybe they would look through a database, ask a coworker, talk to IT, even sit in a classroom. But now, let's see how easy it is with the WalkMe platform. I'm going to click on it, and what you see now is because this is the spotlight method, there is only one place on the page where we can click. That would be the products button. And this is great because it's basically going to eliminate all manner of errors because there's only going to be one place people can click. As you can see, it's taken us here now to the price book page where once again the page is grayed out and we are here, create a new price book ready to go within a few minutes of using the website. Now I'd like to show you a little bit as we're onboarding new users. Um, the people who are implementing um, this software, what they are able to do is create an onboarding method. As you can see here on the right of your screen, we have a sample right here where they would put several walkthroughs up front as part of the, the training process. Of course, they can analyze how the uh, employees and agents are coming along in their training and completing these tasks. And that helps them to be able to see how the training is going in general. And it also gives first-time users of whatever the, the software is. And I guess now would be a good time to mention that the examples we're showing you today are not the only examples that this software works on. The WalkMe platform can be attached to any website that is browser-based or anything that has a username and a password. It's very versatile, very light, and very easy to implement. So from here, if we're talking about onboarding, let's say I needed to add contacts to an account, it's going to walk me through the process as soon as I click through, showing me step-by-step uh, -step exactly how to complete the task. In addition to that, something that we find, uh, we talked about earlier, is um, the idea of change management and how to get through the process uh, when we have implemented a new, uh, something new in our, in our software. And the, one of the ways we can combat that is using what we call a permalink. When the email would be sent from the, the management or whatever it is to one of your, uh, one of your agents, they would send a link to a walkthrough. So let's say we created a new process for how to create a new lead, and here's a link so you guys can see exactly how we're going to do it. These can be bookmarked, and these can be saved, and they're there always whenever somebody needs the help. So right now we're going to look through uh, the lead process, and within seconds we're already on the new lead page where we're going to be walked through the rest of the process. Something else that's interesting to note is that for your agents, the permalinks are a great tool in dealing with customers that have some of the simple how-to questions we were talking about earlier. An agent can simply email the, the permalink to the customer, and then they can just click and be on their way and solve the problem uh, very quickly. So now what I'd like to do is come back here very quickly to the walk me curve. And um, what we're going to look at now is what, what we see when we implement walk me on the curve. And what we're, what we're seeing as part of this is that everything is constant. Productivity, performance is constant. There's no need to retrain. And when a process change is initiated, that's going to be implemented smoothly as well. So as you can see from day one, New customers are already feeling comfortable using the provided walkthroughs. The time it takes to onboard a customer or an agent has been reduced dramatically. And when you multiply that over an entire department or an entire customer base, the time and money that has been saved is impossible to ignore. We've also given our agents a new tool as well as the means to succeed in using it. Knowing we're providing our agents with the best aids in accomplishing their tasks is going to foster a great level of trust and agent confidence. So that's basically how guided navigation and self-service can uh, improve your online uh, customer experience and your agent uh, experience, as well as improving your contact center efficiency. Uh, before I go, I'd just quickly like to share with you a little bit 
about uh, our customers. As you can see, due to the versatile nature of our solution, we have collected a highly diverse group of clients. You can see telecommunications companies like Telstra, heavy industrial concerns like 3M and Cummins, and e-commerce sites like eBay, even higher institutions of learning like the University of Michigan and the University of California at Davis. So I'm going to hand uh, the reins back to Jason right now, who's going to introduce our next uh, speaker. Thank you very much for being with us today, and uh, I hope to maybe speak some, to some of you uh, in the future. Thank you, Johnny, for that uh, presentation on guided navigation and self-service. Um, if you have any questions, if anybody in the audience has any questions for Johnny about the technology, uh, please type your questions in the Q&A uh, box, and again, uh, we'll get to those questions at the end. Uh, at this point, I'd like to turn things over to our next presenter. That's uh, Oded Kaplan, pre-sales manager at Jakarta. To look at a different type of self-service technology, uh, Oded, over to you. So um, what I'd like to do is take the next uh, 20 or so minutes to uh, introduce you guys to a uh, technology of ours called Visual IVR, which we think is going to change the way a lot of your customers interact with your organizations. So I'm going to take the, the first few slides to introduce you to our company, uh, give, a, give you a bit of a background around what we do and our history and where we come from, uh, and then uh, introduce you to, uh, to the product itself, giving you a brief overview, and then show you how it works for the demo. So a little bit about Jakarta, who we are and where we come from. Oh, excuse me, apologies for that. <clears throat> so essentially, we're a veteran company. We've been around for the last 25 years, primarily in the context of customer experience space. And everything we do helps our customers simplify customer interactions and drive efficiency for contact centers and organizations across all customer touch points, in a contact center, in the web, mobile, and wherever else you're engaging with your customers. We're a global company, and we've got offices <coughs> across the world, in North America, uh, Europe, and, uh, and the Middle East. And we've got uh, deployments and deployment partners in four continents, and we've got a real global footprint. In terms of, uh, in terms of the industries we, uh, we're active in, we've, uh, we've got uh, very big customers, as you can see, in, uh, uh, in quite a few uh, very serious uh, verticals. We've got uh, some, serious, uh, some serious deployments in uh, contact centers, numbering uh, upwards of a few thousand uh, agents with, uh, with uh, products from uh, all across our, our product suite. So, we're here today to discuss Visual IVR and how Visual IVR can help you offer a more efficient, more streamlined, and more consistent customer service. So in order to understand what Visual IVR is and how it fits into your contact center, let's take a look at how customers are engaging with you at the moment. So if you look at the breakdown of your customers and how they're reaching out to your organization, analysts tell us that approximately 60% of your customers are attempting some level of self-service, either on the website or in your application, and of that, only approximately 25% uh, of those customers successfully uh, self-serve themselves. 75% of those uh, customers end up abandoning and reverting to a voice channel. And when they do revert to a voice channel, they end up in a contact center. When they end up in the contact center, they have to begin the process from, uh, from, uh, from the start and begin explaining uh, the problems to the contact center, uh, to the contact center agent from scratch. This leads to longer handle times, inefficient customer experience, and a fragmented customer experience. So once the contact center agent picks up, he doesn't know what the contact center, what the uh, customer has done on the website, what they've done on the application, and he needs to begin collecting this information uh, from, uh, from a new. 40% of their customers, surprisingly enough, elect to call the contact center directly. And when they do call the contact center, they hit the IVR. And uh, let's face it, uh, customers are not in love with your IVR, to say the least. Uh, customers have to listen through long, extensive menus. Remember, was it uh, press 1 for customer care, press 2 for, uh, for customer service? And they start weighing out the options. And if they've made a mistake, they need to begin the process from, uh, from the beginning. And I don't know if any of you have tried collecting uh, alphanumeric or tried uh, entering alphanumeric information, such as an email or an address in an IVR. It's uh, very, very difficult. <clears throat> 
So what is visual IVR, and how does visual IVR attempt to solve that problem? Visual IVR is a very simple visual menu-based interaction instead of a voice interaction. It allows us to create enhanced uh, navigation and self-service flows that reduce your average handle time. And once, they, once the customers do end up in the contact center, provide a more, uh, more contextual uh, experience for the, for the agents as well. So if you go back and revisit uh, <clears throat> the previous slide, if we go back to our diagram, if you'll note here, visual IVR is represented in green. <clears throat> so you can see where it fits in. So if you turn our attention first to the self-service channel, we know that about 75% of your customers are abandoning the call and trying to call your contact center. Visual IVR is very powerful here uh, to capture customer intent. Visual IVR can capture the intent by asking the customer a right set of simple questions to try to identify what they're calling about. So when that call does come into the contact center, the agent already has a view of what the customer has done on the website, in the IVR, and presents the, the agent a, a more, uh, more complete view of what the customer is trying to do. So instead of uh, beginning to explain the problem of what I'm trying to solve to the, to the uh, agent from, uh, from scratch, the agent can already pick up the phone and say, hi, Mr. Kaplan, I can see you're, you're calling it about a billing dispute, and then you've already looked at, uh, at the uh, last five bills on our website. <clears throat> and because the transaction is uh, performed visually, uh, visual IVR can collect far more information, far more complex data than the voice IVR can, uh, can such as uh, alphanumeric information, which uh, in turn can be presented to the agent, again resulting in uh, lower call times. So for those customers who dial in directly to the IVR, visual IVR can help as well. This can start by replacing your 1-800 number on your website with a contact us button that evokes the visual IVR experience before connecting. We can also offer additional ways such as call intercept on the smartphone or sending an SMS when somebody calls your regular uh, voice IVR. I will expand on this a bit later on in the demonstration. So in terms of where visual IVR can fit in and help your organization, visual IVR is very, very flexible. And due to that, we see our customers implementing visual IVR in various verticals and various industries for a very broad range of their <clears throat> for a very broad range of scenarios, such as telecommunications, which is a good one, technical support, uh, bill explanation, as well as uh, utilities, um, perhaps a meter reading or uh, paying, paying your bill. Uh, financial, uh, the financial uh, uh, industry is a very good uh, candidate for visual IVR, for loan application, and, uh, and payment disputes, as well as reporting stolen cards. Visual IVR is also a very powerful tool and fits very well for outbound scenarios such as perhaps sending surveys or upsell and cross-sell uh, opportunities by uh, uh, pushing visual IVR to your customers, perhaps through an SMS link. <clears throat> what I'd like to show you now is a short demonstration on how visual IVR can allow us to uh, provide a better customer service to, uh, to a customer who's elected to reach out to the organization uh, in a tech support scenario. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen now and walk you through a quick video of a visual IVR scenario. So what you're looking at here is a recording of my telephone on the left-hand side and our visual IVR website on the right. The customer is going to uh, begin on the, on the website and at some point elect to reach out to customer service. He's going to uh, begin by handling a short, uh, short tech support scenario and he's having trouble with his modem. I'm going to walk, uh, walk you through uh, what happens when the customer has decided to call the, uh, the contact center through receiving a visual IVR interaction, and eventually what would happen when, uh, when the customer is connected to the contact center and what the agent sees regarding what the customer has done, both on the website and in a visual IVR. So to begin with, <clears throat> on the right-hand side, you can see our visual IVR website, and uh, I invite you all to uh, go to visualivr.com afterwards and take a look at it for yourself. Everything I, I'm doing now can be done afterwards. There's a lot of information here, such as uh, technical overviews, and <clears throat> there's a full, inform full information about everything I've, uh, uh, I've discussed today, as well as some more uh, in-depth technical information, uh, including architecture diagrams and supported, uh, and supported environments. Now, the reason I'm doing this and uh, navigating through our website and demonstrating this to you is because I'll use it afterwards in the demonstration, and you'll be able to see uh, uh, we'll be able to see some information regarding what I've done throughout the demo. 
So again, uh, you can see the demo uh, on the website, and I'm beginning to run through a, uh, through a tech support demo. Uh, this demo is available for various regions and various uh, industries, and you can do this uh, yourself afterwards. <clears throat> so I'm going to select the telecommunications demo, and I'll be presented with a phone number. So at this point, you can say the customer has decided to call in the contact center. Perhaps uh, he has tried to self-serve on the website and hasn't been able to complete his self-service. He's elected to call the contact center, and when he does, <clears throat> he'll dial in. And once he dials in, he'll be met with the IVR. So you won't be able to hear this, but uh, the IVR is prompting him to uh, experience a visual, uh, a visual experience as an alternative to the IVR, perhaps telling him there's a long wait and it, uh, asking him whether he'd like to experience a visual alternative. So at this point, the customer opts in to receive the visual service by clicking 1. And once he does, he'll receive an SMS link to the visual IVR experience. So you should be able to see the SMS coming up here on the, uh, on the top of my telephone. So at this point, I'm going to open up the, uh, the SMS message and click on the link. <clears throat> so I've clicked on the link, and at this point, and you, you'll see that the call is still engaged. Of course, we can disconnect the call. Uh, we can have both the voice and the visual channel running at the same time. <clears throat> but you can see that it's, uh, the two channels don't interfere with each other. At this point, after clicking the link, the, uh, the agent is, uh, excuse me, the customer is already in a visual IVR. And he can begin self-serving or navigating. We're beginning the process of collecting the customer's intent and asking him those key questions, which are going to allow the agent at the end of the process to provide him with the best service. Or possibly even actually complete self-service within visual IVR, as opposed to uh, going through the IVR menu and ending up in the contact center, allowing for a significant amount of, uh, of call deflection. So you can see the, uh, the customer's number here. And we begin the process of authenticating and validating the customer. <clears throat> so we ask him whether this is the phone number associated with his account. The customer clicks on yes. And at this point, we can begin authenticating the customer, uh, not only by, uh, by entering numeric information, by also, but also by entering a little bit um, more complex data, alphanumeric information, perhaps a PIN code, uh, a secret PIN, or a part, secret question, or an email uh, login. In this case, we're going to select email sign-in. And at this point, the customer is going to enter his email uh, address and password in order to validate himself. <clears throat> so this is something that would uh, be very, very difficult to implement in a, in, an, in a traditional IVR. And we can, in fact, use your existing authentication mechanisms both on your website and in your organization in order to authenticate your customers. So I'll enter the password. And at this point, I can begin asking the customer various questions about what he's doing to try to better identify who he is and what he's calling about. So if you'll note, this visual menu is much, much easier to read than a voice menu. If I, were to, if I were to listen through this and ask the customer what they're calling about, issues with internet, issues with watching TV and other services, uh, the customer can browse with this, uh, through this much faster, and you're getting a much better customer experience uh, through a visual channel. <clears throat> so in this case, the customer is experiencing issues with his internet. And at this point, we've integrated with the CTI system to inform the customer that there's a, approximately a four-minute uh, wait time. So we can, we can leverage that wait time and begin to offer the customer some self-service while he's waiting on the line. So the customer can wait on the line. And while he's waiting for the contact center agent, we can provide him with a series of questions to continue and collect even more information regarding his problem. So for example, we can, we can begin to self-serve and ask the customer what the lights are on in his modem. So you can see that we're asking a lot of different questions regarding their lights. Now, imagine this in a traditional IVR menu. This is something which would be extremely frustrating because you can only ask one question at a time uh, in an IVR menu. <clears throat> so the customer has entered uh, the, uh, the number of lights which are on. And bear in mind, he's still waiting online for the contact center agent. So we can offer him the possibility to do a master reset Again, integrating to perhaps uh, to back-end provisioning systems. So after performing a master reset, we can prompt the customer and ask him whether or not the problem has been solved. And if the problem hasn't been solved, we can connect the customer 
to the contact center agent. So I'd like to draw your attention to the right-hand side here. And let's say the customer has been connected to the contact center and he's been uh, transferred to the correct agent. And the agent has picked up the call. What I'd like to show you now is what the agent would see once the call has been transferred to the agent. So you can see here the agent already has a quick view regarding the customer, what his name is, his phone number, where he is. But more importantly, I have a full record of everything the customer has done in Visual IVR in terms of the questions and answers that have been asked and any information the customer has entered, all that alphanumeric information and the various questions regarding the modem status, for example, uh, which I've uh, asked the customer and I can see and the agent can see directly once they've picked up the call. And that's a very, very powerful tool. So I told you earlier on about the capacity to immediately pick up the call and say, hello, Mr. Doe, I can see you've uh, tried to self-serve your, uh, uh, your tech support issue and you've performed a master reset. Uh, let me guide you how to proceed here. But more importantly, I can also see everything that the customer has done within the web page prior to picking up the phone call and dialing the contact center. So in that respect, the experience isn't fragmented. And we have a full history presented to the agent of everything that the customer has done from the moment they've begun uh, engaging with your organization to the point when they picked up the agent for assisted service. And that's very, very powerful. And one final piece of information that we can see, uh, by the way, you can see these uh, tech support pages and home page uh, that I visited earlier on within visualivr.com. <clears throat> so one final piece of information that I can see here is the Visual IVR flow. So I know where the customer uh, went and how, which pages he visited when he traversed the uh, the interaction in Visual IVR. And that's very important, and uh, we can also collect a lot of information, including uh, perhaps uh, photographs, uh, and uh, ask, the, uh, ask the customer a wide, wide range of uh, question types, and upload a file as well, which can support a very broad range of scenarios. <clears throat> so one final uh, piece of information here, this Visual IVR interaction that you see on, your, that you see on the left-hand side here, was built using our the visual drag and drop designer, which I'm not going to demonstrate today. You can find information about it on visualivr.com. This was built in a, entirely in a, in a drag and drop designer and requires no coding skills in order to build, which allows a, a very, very rapid deployment time and allows you to react very quickly to changing market conditions and monitor your, uh, monitor your interactions and see customer uh, behavior within, uh, within visual IVR and respond quickly to, uh, to the way your customers are interacting. You can tell where your customers are dropping off more and reaching the contact center, and perhaps tweak your interaction um, to mirror that. Again, offering, uh, offering your customers with an optimized customer service experience. Well, I'd like to hand back to Jason at this point. <coughs> and I'd like to ask you, uh, if uh, you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free. OK. Thank you very much to Oded. Um, as, uh, as Other mentioned, uh, uh, we're about to start the questions. I'll pass things over to Lee in a moment uh, to do those questions. But I just want to thank both of our presenters uh, today, Johnny Steiner from WalkMe and Oded Kaplan from, um, and Oded Kaplan from Jakarta. Um, both uh, self-service technologies, be it visual IVR or real-time guidance, I, Trust and hope uh, the audience found the presentations informative and that hopefully um, they can help benefit you in terms of uh, customer experience and your contact center. You see on the screen, by the way, the names and the contact information of the presenters. Um, and you can, uh, this will stay up during the Q&A. Uh, so uh, you, if you have any questions that you won't be able to get to during the webinar, or if you just want to ask some more detailed follow-up questions that after the webinar is over, uh, we urge you to, um, to uh, don't hesitate to contact uh, people. OK, uh, Lee, I'm going to turn things back over to you for, uh, the, for some of the questions. Great, great. Once again, thank you, Jason, Johnny, and Oded for your valuable insights on the art of contact center efficiency. Um, in order to respect your time and allow you to return to your busy day, we will answer as many questions as possible from the Q&A window, and the remaining will be responded to individually after the event. Uh, we will now answer a few questions that have already been uh, typed into the Q&A window, and uh, some of them I'm going to have to figure out exactly which uh, 
they were directed to, whether it's uh, Walk Me or Jakarta, but we'll, we'll get through it. Uh, the first question here, I'm pretty sure, is for Walk Me. Uh, the question says, uh, for Walk Me, who creates these guidance sequences, and is it a very technical process? Uh, thanks. Thanks very much for, uh, for asking that. Um, it is not a technical process. Um, the people who are sort of overseeing the deployment of the software would be uh, creating the walkthroughs, uh, the IT department, whoever is, is implementing it. Um, and it's done uh, very simply. In fact, uh, why don't I show you quickly here? It can be implemented with a, um, with a simple JavaScript that you put into your site. And I can show you right now the walkthrough editor. Um, if you can see here, it's an add-on for Firefox. It's free. You can go ahead and download it um, if you would like. And um, there's a need help button that provides walkthrough uh, support and would actually tell people how to create a walkthrough and uh, as they're creating the actual walkthrough. So uh, it's a very simple process, and uh, it's uh, very easy to do. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, let's see, I have a question here. It's probably for Oded. Yes, it's about Visual IVR. Uh, the person asks, how do you typically put a business case behind something like this uh, to sell it internally? So it's a combination of uh, uh, both uh, hard metrics and uh, soft metrics. Of course, the soft metrics are uh, customer satisfaction and, uh, how, and uh, how customers prefer this type of interaction. But uh, we know it's uh, very hard to create a business case around that. So uh, if you look at the three biggest drivers behind uh, the ROI for a visual IVR, it's uh, typically um, an average handle time reduction. So we talked about uh, collecting customer intent and rich customer information on the visual channel. And uh, I demonstrated showing it uh, to the agent. So um, that's very powerful. And of course, a reduction in uh, internal transfers because of uh, less zero outs, meaning the, uh, the customer is less, uh, less likely to try and escape your IVR and end up reaching the wrong, or the wrong department uh, within the contact center. So that's also a very powerful driver. And of course, the, uh, the third uh, being an increase in call deflection. So ideally, if we can complete the customer's interaction within visual IVR, um, then uh, of course, that, uh, that definitely uh, leads to a reduction in call volume. So. Um, if uh, you're interested in more information, we'd be happy to provide you with, uh, with some uh, tools to create uh, a customized ROI model. Yeah, Ode, we have another question that may uh, kind of follow up on what you just said. It says, uh, what can we expect from an average handle time reduction? Mm -hmm. So that, uh, of course, is uh, entirely dependent on uh, the complexity of the call types. Um, so the type of information you can connect visually and uh, what changes uh, you may want to make to your IVR flow. So there isn't, uh, there isn't uh, really a single answer to this. Um, however, just to give you some context, uh, we typically expect a 20 to 60 second handle time reduction by moving to visual IVR, uh, where you can collect some information up front and uh, just providing those three, four uh, important questions to the agent already allows you to make some significant savings. Okay, excellent. So we have a couple of uh, implementation questions here uh, for both WalkMe and Jakarta. Uh, the first one uh, is a WalkMe question. It says, what is implementation process like of WalkMe on a website, and does the end user have to download it? Okay. So the implementation process, as I sort of touched on earlier, is simply downloading the, uh, the free client as, a, um, as an extension for uh, Firefox, and then from there to implement a, a small JavaScript into your website, and then you're basically ready to start creating the uh, the walkthroughs and go. As far as the end user, no, there's nothing to download. It'll work across um, any um, any platform. It'll work on uh, on mobile websites as well, and um, it's just ready to go as soon as a, as a user needs it. Okay, uh, similar question, Adair. This person asks. Um, for Visual IVR, does one need to have an app installed to utilize it? So, uh, no, absolutely not. Um, Visual IVR is uh, implemented in an HTML client. So um, this was a core design goal of ours to, uh, to uh, actually ensure user adoption. So requiring an, an app uh, only targets a specific segment of your, uh, of your uh, client base. Uh, and with limited adoption. So the idea being that uh, all customers can use this with or without an application um, from your website or your smartphone, and uh, all your customers essentially need is an HTML4 or HTML5 uh, compliant browser, uh, which uh, is pretty much prevalent on every smart day today, uh, smartphone today. So 
Of course, if you, if you have a native application, you can uh, absolutely embed Visual IVR in that, and we see a lot of our customers doing that as well. And here's a related question, Oded. Um, our, our attendee asks, does a customer have to call in in order to access the Visual IVR, or can you link directly from the website without first calling? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Uh, and the answer is no, the customer does not have to call in. Um, in fact, Visual IVR has, a, has a, a specific client which is aimed at uh, integration to websites uh, with a slightly different look and feel. And uh, we can actually even transition between those various channels. So you can begin an interaction in Visual IVR on your website and then transition to Visual IVR on your mobile device uh, and uh, actually hop between those channels. But uh, no, you do not have to call in. Uh, there are a number of different ways of deploying Visual IVR, but you don't have to call. <clears throat> okay. Uh, question for WalkMe. Uh, they ask, does WalkMe work on any web browser, and does it also work on mobile? It works on any web browser. Um, in terms of the the extension to create the walkthroughs, that uh, is only on uh, that's only on Firefox. Um, it does work on mobile, but not for mobile apps. Uh, currently, just for mobile websites, um, it's a responsive page, so it'll it'll know what size you're you're working on. Um, and if yeah, it works on uh, mobile sites as well. Okay. Uh, question for for Jakarta for Visual IVR. Uh, Did the question is how do you put this in front of your customers or get them to adopt it? All right, so there are multiple approaches. So uh, in the demonstration, of course, we saw uh, the customer dialing into uh, a contact center and sending an SMS. Um, of course, on your website, you can replace your 1-800 with a 1-800 uh, number with a contact us button that starts your visual IVR session tying into the previous question. Um, so we can uh, <clears throat> optionally keep the voice channel open while, while the customers are on the call if they have dialed into the contact center. Um, and then uh, actually invoke the visual channel to help them understand. Uh, um, to, oh, excuse me. Uh, so once uh, the customer is dialed in, we can uh, send the SMS which we saw, and we also saw the uh, the uh, call remaining open and integration to the uh, to the um, to the IVR, uh, including uh, including also uh, bringing back handle time. Um, but uh, quite easily, we can also hang up the call. Uh, and in that respect, there's a lot of different ways that we can approach this question. <coughs> Okay. Well, uh, one last question, because um, our, our time is running short. We want to respect our attendees' uh, busy days. Uh, the last question, I think it's for Visual IVR, but uh, both can answer. Um, the question says, does this work in English only, or what about multiple languages? Uh, Oded, do you want to take it first, or do you want to? Um, yeah, I'd be happy to. So um, Visual IVR supports uh, 16 languages uh, out of the box, uh, but additional languages can be uh, can be added. Uh, essentially, pretty much all languages supported in uh, in Visual IVR. And okay. Walk me. So for for Walk me, yes, um, it works in any language basically, as long as um, somebody on the user end knows uh, knows how to speak it, they can translate it into any language uh, they want. It's uh, supported in, in any way. Um, whatever they want to type, uh, they're welcome to to put in. Uh, in fact, it helps a lot in certain websites that are in different languages to translate them between the languages without having to spend the time or the money to translate the entire website. You can just add a few walkthroughs and help guide people through the most important processes. Okay, excellent. Well, this concludes our webinar on the art of contact center efficiency. Uh, thanks again to Jason Silberman, Senior Marketing and Research Director at WalkMe and editor of the Training Station blog, uh, Johnny Steiner, Marketing Director of WalkMe, and Odid Kaplan, the Manager of Pre-Sales at Jakarta. Uh, their contact information is on the screen now uh, on the current slide, so be sure to take note of that. If there are any other questions that we were unable to answer during today's session, we will respond to you directly after the event. A replay of the event will be available shortly from Jakarta and from WalkMe. We encourage you to visit our websites, visualivr.com, excuse me, that's visual-ivr.com, and also walkme.com to learn more about our solutions. Again, thank you for attending today, and have a wonderful day.